Hi, Dr. Romano. What you, what you got in your hand there? What are you doing? Don't worry about what's in my hand. Come around here and let me show you a general chemistry question. That okay, I'm Dr. Working on for the DAC group. What we're going to do here is we are going to estimate the boiling point for a compound using thermodynamic data. Now, the first thing I did is I gave you a compound, a liquid. I gave you the heat of formation and I gave you the entropy. I gave you the gaseous form of it, the, the heat of formation and the entropy. Now, anytime you got a problem like this, be careful of the units. The heat of formation is in kilojoules per mole, where the entropy is in joules per mole Kelvin. Don't worry about the Kelvin, but we got to worry about the joules. Moles is um, fine, but we got to convert one of them into either joules or kilojoules. I'm going to convert everything into kilojoules. Now, the first thing we need to understand is whenever you're at a boiling point or a melting point or a freezing point, it's an equilibrium point. And at equilibrium, the delta G is equal to zero. So what I do, knowing that, is I write the reaction first. When something is boiling, we're going to take a liquid into the gaseous state. Up goes my formula. Delta G is delta H minus T delta S. Now, I plugged in my zero for delta G. There's my H, T delta S, brought it to the other side. And therefore, the temperature in Kelvin, because we're working in Kelvin, is going to be delta H over the delta S. Now... Unfortunately, I didn't just give you the delta H and the S. I'm going to make you work for it. So we're going to go aside. And the delta H of a reaction is the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants. So the products is gaseous water. So we first go for gaseous water. Um, it's minus 241.8. In this case, I said water. I meant X. So it's minus 241.8 minus the minus 285.8, and that gives me 44 kilojoules. Then the delta S is the sum of the products minus the reactants again. So we're going to take the product, which is the gaseous form of the compound, 188.7 minus the reactants, which is the liquid, minus the 69.9. That gave me 118, but that puts me in joules because we were working in joules. So 118.8 joules is 0.1188 kilojoules. Now that I got the delta H and I got the delta S, what we're going to do is put it in. It would be 44 over the 0.1188. For the DAT exam, that would be probably where we would just leave it for the DAT. Um, for those that want to finish it out with me, um, if, it was point, if it was 4 over 0.1, um, or 44 over 0.1, that would put me up around the area of 440. But as you can see, we're under 440 because this is 0.1188. So it's under 400. Um, and good estimation would be about 370 or 380. It came out to be 370 with a calculator. Um, the numbers on the dot will look much nicer, but I hope this gives you an idea of how to go about doing this. Remember, this is one standard problem. Also, never forget, if a reaction is spontaneous, it has nothing to do with speed. It just means that delta G is negative. You always want to look for a negative delta G on a spontaneous reaction. But as my professor once told me, a spontaneous reaction could take 5,000 years. It's got nothing to do with the kinetics. All right, I'll leave you uh, now. Thank you, Dr. Romano. Okay, wow. good day to you. Good day to you, sir.